We are living in what is truly a golden age of exploration. A time when extraordinary tools of astronomy gaze deeper and more clearly into space than ever before, seeking answers to questions that have endured for as long as human eyes have gazed into the night skies. Is there life on other worlds? What mysteries exist among the stars? How large is the universe? And where do we, as human beings, fit into it all? 3,000 years ago, David, the Old Testament poet, reflected upon these distant points of light and wrote that the heavens declare the glory of God with a voice that goes out into all the earth. Today, that voice and the message it bears is amplified by spectacular technology. As photographs like these, the crown jewels of astronomical study, unlock new sources of insight and wonder, revealing a creation rich in diversity and brilliant in design. Join us now on a remarkable journey of discovery. A view of our solar system and the realms of deep space as seen through the most powerful eyes in all of history. And as we venture toward the very edge of the known universe, perhaps we will come to understand the supreme message that the heavens proclaim to mankind. The message of God's existence and power and the ultimate significance of every human life. Of all the sciences, astronomy is probably the oldest, for humanity's search to understand the universe has continued throughout recorded history. And as countless generations have looked up into a sky filled with lights, one star has always dominated the rest. Since the day of its creation, it has turned darkness into dawn. And to the inhabitants of our planet, no object in the heavens approaches its importance. Let us then begin our exploration of the universe at the focal point of our solar system, the Sun. They are among the most awesome sights in the heavens. Luminous fountains of hydrogen and helium, sometimes leaping a hundred thousand miles into space. To the astronomer, they are known as solar prominences, the distinctive signatures of the sun's potential and power. Compared to other stars, the Sun is of average size and brightness, yet it is still a creation of amazing proportions. 
860,000 miles in diameter, this fiery ball contains more than 99% of all the matter in the solar system. If it was hollow, a million spheres the size of the Earth could easily fit inside. Sometimes described as an immense power plant, the Sun is driven by a 10 billion year supply of fuel. Deep within its core, a nuclear reaction converts hydrogen into helium, releasing as byproducts most of the heat and light available throughout the solar system. This process is so efficient that each second the Sun emits more energy than humanity has consumed in all of history. Once believed by ancient astronomers to be a smooth, polished sphere, the Sun is actually a cauldron seething with constant change. Unlike the solid Earth, which rotates uniformly on its axis, this gigantic ball of gas spins faster at its equator than it does at its poles, causing its surface to twist and stretch violently. The products of this turmoil are dramatic. Enormous sunspots, breaks in the star's surface as large as the Earth, appear and vanish during mysterious 11-year intervals. Raging flares, the greatest explosions in the solar system, often erupting with more force than a billion hydrogen bombs. And a powerful solar wind, blowing a steady stream of electrically charged particles to the most distant planets. Each second, about five million tons of the sun's mass escapes into space as pure energy. That's an amount equal to the total weight of water flowing over Niagara Falls every 10 minutes. Yet despite this tremendous loss of unreplenished matter, the sun is so large, it could continue to shine at the center of the solar system for at least the next five billion years. Nothing is more admirable than the planet's motions. Nothing more beautiful. And there is nothing which testifies more evidently to the wisdom of the Creator. 400 years ago, the German astronomer Johannes Kepler discovered the basic laws that govern the motions of the planets as they raced around the Sun. Kepler realized that the solar system operated like a superbly crafted machine, with every gear working in harmony. We now know it is the Sun's gravitational pull that drives this celestial mechanism, controlling the pathways of the nine planets. If left to follow its own momentum, each planetary body would continually move through space in a straight line. The Sun's gravity counterbalances this runaway action, first bending, then holding the course of the planets as they travel in their elliptical orbits. As with all of his creation, God had designed the Sun's family based upon order and flawless precision, where orbits were predictable to within a few seconds and miles. By understanding these movements, the roadmaps to the planets were clearly defined, and all that remained was to go.
Fueled by the timeless thirst to explore and the knowledge to navigate the depths of space, journeys, once the domain of science fiction, were launched with optimism and hope. Early destinations included Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Along with the Earth, they comprised the inner planets of the solar system. Each new glimpse of these rocky terrestrial worlds revised centuries of astronomical thought while painting a richer, more complete picture of creation than we had ever seen before. In March of 1974, after a journey of more than 60 million miles, the spacecraft Mariner 10 made its initial encounter with Mercury. Though the planet was obscured from the Earth by the sun's blinding glare, Mariner's cameras suddenly brought it into brilliant focus. Eight thousand high-resolution photographs revealed a meteor-scarred landscape covered with impact craters. The similarities to the far side of our own moon were numerous. Devoid of any protective atmosphere, surface temperatures on Mercury range nearly a thousand degrees between the night and daylight sides of the planet. The exploration of Venus, the second planet from the Sun, would prove even more challenging. Long considered the Earth's twin because of its comparable size and proximity, about 25 million miles away. The surface of the planet was hidden by a cloud cover 150 miles thick. Utilizing radar during its three-year mission, the spacecraft Magellan effectively penetrated Venus's shroud to capture views of stunning clarity. From this data, a computer-generated flight over the terrain has helped to expand our knowledge of our nearest planetary neighbor. Venus is a forbidding, yet strangely beautiful world. A realm dominated by rugged lava flows and volcanic craters. Clusters of circular lava domes and deep canyons walled by jagged cliffs create dramatic panoramas. The landscape is desolate and sterile, scorched by temperatures reaching nearly 900 degrees Fahrenheit, the highest of any planet in the solar system. For reasons still unknown, Venus rotates in a direction opposite the other planets, slowly turning east to west on its axis once every 240 Earth days requiring only 32 Earth weeks to orbit the Sun. A year on Venus is actually shorter than a day. After departing Venus, we approach and pass the Earth then another 50 million miles beyond our orbit, and 140 million from the Sun, looms the planet that has probably fascinated us more than any other. Mars, the fourth and last of the solid inner worlds.
For centuries, Mars had held the greatest promise for the existence of extraterrestrial life. Like the Earth, it has seasons and rotates at a rate nearly identical to our own. The Martian polar caps were known to contain large amounts of water ice. And winding channels believed to be dry riverbeds laced its surface. Decades of exploration, however, have revealed an arid, sterile world, incapable of sustaining any form of living organism. Yet despite the absence of life here, fascination with the red planet has not diminished. For studies of its geography have proven both surprising and spectacular. Only about half the diameter of the Earth, Mars is home to some of the most imposing landforms ever discovered. As we soar above its surface, canyons, craters, and volcanoes stand in awesome proportion. Valles Marineris, the largest known canyon in the solar system, stretches 2,800 miles. This sprawling rift is 13 times longer than the Grand Canyon and would span coast to coast across the continental United States. Rising 79,000 feet above the desert, Olympus Mons is the solar system's most enormous volcano. Three times taller than Mount Everest, the base of this gigantic peak would completely engulf the state of Washington. These missions to the inner planets were tremendous accomplishments. And in many ways, I think they have to rank as some of the greatest achievements in the history of astronomy. You have to remember that for thousands of years, people tried to study these planets when all they had to work with were tiny pinpoints of light in the night sky. The invention of the telescope helped, but our observations were still inconclusive. We just couldn't get close enough to see them in any detail. Then almost instantly, space probes like the Mariners and the Magellan allowed us to see these planets as we had never seen them before. Prior to the space probes, we really did not have a lot of information about the surface and the atmospheres of these planets. And then when the space probes went and sent back their pictures and other information, it was a complete revolution. Uh, whereas before we saw nothing on the surface of Venus, for instance, suddenly we saw climates, we saw atmospheres we had never been able to study before. We saw a tremendous amount of geography. And many of the ideas we had 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 to be thrown away and completely replaced with new ideas about these planets. And it happened virtually overnight. In the Old Testament of the Bible, we're encouraged to lift up our eyes to the heavens and consider the works of God. The more I think about it, I really believe that God wants us to search out every corner of his creation and try to learn all that we can about the things that he's made. This is exactly what the expeditions to the inner planets have allowed us to do. I suppose that God could have made a solar system with just one planet and one moon, but he didn't. Instead, he created something far more diverse and complex, and then he gave us the curiosity and the ability to explore it. And I believe there's a reason. I think that as our knowledge of the planets, or any other part of creation increases, so does our sense of wonder for God. He's an artist, and he's painted a fascinating mural, and filled it with more detail than we could ever imagine. 
and I think he wants us to experience and understand as much of it as we possibly can. That's why it's so exciting to be alive at a time when technology gives us a chance to see the universe more clearly than at any time in history. Uh, MPD, you have a go and a final clear launch. Uh, copy, launch direction, copy. Late in the summer of 1977, two remarkable journeys of exploration were launched. In many ways, they would surpass any undertaken in human history. Twin spacecraft, christened Voyager 1 and 2, escaped the Earth's gravitational pull and sped to the farthest reaches of the solar system. Their mission, to explore the giant outer planets at close range for the first time. On Earth, a global network of radio telescopes controlled the flight of the Voyager crafts. Throughout the mission, these instruments would also receive the data transmitted from space. In March of 1979, 18 months and 500 million miles after liftoff, Voyager 1 made its closest approach to its initial destination, Jupiter, the largest planet in the solar system. Jupiter is an immense sphere of hot liquid and hydrogen gas, large enough to hold a thousand Earths. It rotates on its axis completely in only 10 hours and is ringed by alternating bands of jet stream winds that travel in opposite directions. These opposing wind currents stir up clouds above the planet's surface, creating a mural of swirling abstract art. An immense hurricane, twice the size of the Earth, dominates Jupiter's surface. Discovered nearly 400 years ago, this colossal storm still rages furiously while rotating once every six days. Sixteen known moons orbit the planet. Four of them, including Europa and Io, are as large or larger than the Earth's lunar companion. Detailed photographic studies reveal worlds of diverse geography, including a system of active volcanoes on Io's surface. Before leaving Jupiter, Voyager made another discovery, a thin ring of rocky particles that encircled the giant sphere. Seen here, backlit against the sun, this previously undetected ring glows as a halo against the blackness of space. The astonishing images gathered here were only a foretaste of what was to come in the years ahead. Catapulted through space for another 18 months and 500 million miles, Voyager began its historic encounter with Saturn in the fall of 1980. About half the size of Jupiter, Saturn is the second largest planet, and its wondrous system of rings have long been the most familiar objects in the solar system. Passing within 40,000 miles, the Voyagers again sent back a wealth of information. From Earth, Saturn's rings had appeared to consist of only a few wide bands. Voyager revealed that there were actually thousands of narrow ringlets, each comprised of frozen chunks of ice mixed with dust. 
These particles ranged in size from microscopic granules to icebergs as large as a house. Saturn is orbited by at least 18 moons. Again, Voyager imagery brought them into sharper focus than ever before. Titan, the largest, is the only moon in the solar system with a significant atmosphere. While the surface of Mimas displayed an enormous meteor crater 80 miles in diameter. There is a vital relationship between Saturn and its moons, for it is the gravitational pull exerted by these tiny satellites that helps shape and define some of the planet's rings. By August of 1981, the exploration of Saturn was complete. The decision was then made to extend the mission on to Uranus and Neptune. A rare alignment of the outer planets that occurs only once every 175 years would make this grand tour of the four gas giants possible. As the Voyager 1 craft headed out of the solar system, Voyager 2 was targeted on a four-year, billion-mile course to Uranus, the seventh planet from the Sun. Again, Voyager imagery fascinated the world as its camera focused on the planet's system of rings. It found ten dark bands, the color of coal dust, ranging in width from three to sixty miles. Uranus is truly unique. Tipped over on its side, perhaps the result of an ancient meteor impact, its polar regions alternately face almost directly into the sun. The final leg of Voyager's odyssey would span yet another billion miles. A distance so great that clusters of radio telescopes were linked together to receive the spacecraft's ever-weakening transmissions. And in August 1989, 12 years and three and a half billion miles after its launch, Voyager 2 approached Neptune, the last of the giant outer planets. Like Uranus, Neptune consists of a small, heavy rock core surrounded by hot liquid and topped by an atmosphere rich in hydrogen and traces of methane gas. Extensive studies of the planet's turbulent weather patterns yielded unexpected results. It now appears that Neptune is the windiest planet in the solar system. A giant rotating storm called the Great Dark Spot was photographed on its surface with violent gales reaching speeds of up to 1,500 miles per hour. A highlight of the mission was a close pass by Triton, the largest of Neptune's eight known moons. Composed of rock and ice, Triton proved to be the coldest object yet explored in the solar system. This dramatic look back at Neptune and its frozen satellite marked the end of Voyager's encounter. Its explorations of the four gas giants now complete, Voyager 2 bypassed Pluto the smallest and most distant planet, departing instead toward the boundless expanse of interstellar space.
The future of planetary exploration will ride on the wings of new dreams and the technologies they inspire. In late 1995, the spacecraft Galileo, on an extended mission to Jupiter, sent a probe beneath the planet's atmosphere for the first time and initiated a study of its four largest moons at closer range than ever before. And as we move deeper into the 21st century, even greater challenges arise, including a possible encounter with Pluto and its large moon, Charon. And an endeavor that in the past could only be labeled as science fiction. A manned mission to Mars. With each of these efforts, the timeless pursuit to understand the solar system will press forward as new knowledge is obtained. And for those who look, the heavens will continue to declare the miracle of God's glory through the beautiful and mysterious lights that orbit the sun. You know, these expeditions throughout the solar system have allowed us to make close encounters with eight planets and dozens of moons. And the diversity we've seen has been far greater than we ever expected. Through the years, space probes have generated thousands of detailed photographs showing us planets made of rock and others almost totally of gas. We've seen moons made largely of ice and another with active volcanoes. No two of these worlds are exactly the same and yet all but one of them shares a very significant characteristic. Except for the Earth, Every planet and moon that orbits the sun appears to be totally dead, completely devoid of any form of life. You know, it's possible the most important thing we've learned about the solar system is how extraordinarily special the Earth really is. The odds that life could exist here, or anywhere for that matter, are incredibly low. Especially when you take into account all the finely tuned conditions and factors that have to be in place for life to work at all. Just consider the Earth's orbital pathway around the Sun. The Earth moves in a narrow zone at a critical distance where survival is possible. The two planets closest to us, Venus and Mars, are either much too hot or too cold to support any kind of life. The same holds true for the other planets. It's been estimated that only 2% of the entire solar system falls within a range where temperatures are conducive to life. Fortunately, that's precisely the region we happen to occupy. Now, the fact that we're located within the ideal spot in the solar system is only one of the many reasons why we survive from day to day. You see, our moon is also 93 million miles from the sun, and yet it's as dead a place as Mars or Venus. Life on Earth is possible because many factors and properties exist and work together in combination. It's a very complicated puzzle, and our planet has all the pieces. The Earth is the only planet with liquid water. It's also the only planet with an atmosphere based upon nitrogen and oxygen. These are components absolutely essential to life. The tilt of the Earth's axis is an ideal 23 and a half degrees. When you combine that with our moderate 24-hour rotation period, it gives us seasonal changes and a temperate climate. Even the size and distance of our moon is nearly perfect. Its gravitational pull controls the daily movement of the tides so they're strong enough to cleanse the shorelines without flooding the continents. So when you start comparing these different factors, the uh, size of the planet, the distance from the sun, the tilt of the Earth's axis, the rotation period, the existence of the moon, the composition, the atmosphere, and on and on, the number of things that come together is truly remarkable. 
And uh, when you see that kind of evidence, then that suggests very strongly that it didn't just happen, but was caused to happen. Again, someone designed or planned it that way. I like to think of the Earth as a finely crafted watch. You have to have all the springs, all the levers, all the gears, and they have to be in the right place, all the right size, doing the right things. And you could take a box of watch pieces, but I don't think if you shook it up long enough you would ever end up with a watch, and nobody would believe that you would. I believe the situation with the Earth is probably far more critical. You could take a number of different planets, a number of different sizes, distances from the sun, and try it over and over and over again randomly. And just like the watch would never come together out of those pieces, you could never get a planet to just come together with all the right factors in place at the same time to give you a suitable habitat for life. So as we've looked through the solar system, we see that the Earth is not only a unique place, but it's also a place where a number of factors have come together, working in combination, so that you have the only place suitable for life to exist. Now many people look at that and say, wow, the Earth really had a lucky break, didn't it? But I find it a lot easier to believe that instead the Earth was created that way, that there was a creator who designed it, and that when he made the world, he did so with us in mind. It's an explanation for the origin and design of the Earth that's consistent with what both science and the Word of God have revealed. And when you look throughout the solar system, it's not hard to come to the conclusion that there's truly no place like home. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And since that defining moment, our blue jewel of a planet has shined with a brilliance unique in the solar system. Its design is unparalleled. Its operation, often spectacular. And its purpose, unmatched within the boundaries of current understanding to harbor and sustain the only creation capable of exploring its wonders and knowing its God, human life. <laughs>